G'day guys and welcome back to the show. Today we're on my new boat and I'm fishing out of home. I've got a mate's little five inch sounder that is set to the wrong setting. So I had to use my phone compass and Navionics to actually get out to the mark I want to fish. And yeah, we've got all the game gear and I'm solo, which is going to be hard if I do hook a tuna, but that's what I really want. I want a tuna on my new boat this year. I haven't got one yet, so hopefully today's the day that I can get one. Anyway, we'll chuck the usual lures out. I don't have a tuna terra skirt anymore because that broke, so I'll be changing the skirt up to something else. And yeah, same as usual, probably put a diver out and two squidgies. And yeah, hopefully get a yellow fin or hopefully a blue fin. I'll just be happy with anything because I am solo, so beggars can't be choosers. But yeah, it's a nice day out here, so whatever happens, happens. And I did bring my dive gear in case I don't get anything I can run in and get a couple of craze before it gets dark and I'll be happy. Anyway, we'll try the spread out. Wish me luck. I don't really like game fishing solo, but today is a work day. There's heaps of people out, but my mates or people that I fish with, I had no one to come with. So I just thought I'd bite the bullet. Same as when that day I got that marlin on my old boat. I just come out, fingers crossed, get lucky, I guess. I actually putted out with someone who I didn't know. I just met him at the boat ramp. He's just ahead of me there. He just hooked up in about five minutes. I don't know what it is. Always good, even if it's a shit fish, to, to hook up early. It gives you some stoke. It makes you keen to keep fishing. And uh, there was a few birds around him, actually, when he hooked up. So for those uh, birds and keep putting along. I'm going to give you guys a few tips on what I do to try and find tuna. And I'm not the best tuna fisherman in the world but there are a few things that make it a bit easier. So number one, keep your radio on and full volume at all times. You never know when someone might say a mark or you might see their boat and they'll say they're hooked up or something. And if they find the fish first, it doesn't matter. You can still fish near them. You can still kind of go towards that area even if they're hooked up. So that's a helpful thing. The more people on the radio, the better, especially for bluefin. Second tip is I troll it around 10 kilometers an hour, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, but I try and sit around that 10 k's an hour. I think that's what most people do, but if you're unsure, I just stick around that 10 k's an hour. I know there are some lures that you can troll faster and stuff like that, but if you want your lures, like your squidgies, your divers, and your skirts to swim the best, 10 k's is about the best speed you can do, and you still cover ground fairly quickly. The last tip is keep your eyes open. So you never know when you might just see a bird that's sitting a bit higher and it's definitely seen something. You can tell if a bird's just flying, looking, or if it's actually seen something. Obviously a group of birds all kind of in the one area usually means there's fish or bait or something, so head towards that. But just keep your eyes open for any splashes, birds, even dolphins, you know. You just want to keep your eyes open because birds out here are your best friend. Anyway, let's keep putting along and hopefully my tips will work for myself and I can hook up, but I have been donating a fair bit lately, so not feeling too confident, but you know, you gotta be out here. The more hours you put in, the more chance to get the fish. Anyway, hopefully we get one. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a high bird right where my finger is. The first high bird I've seen, my heart actually stopped for a minute when I saw him because I got that stoked. Oh, there's a couple high birds. Actually, there's another one. This is looking good. And there's some birds over here just looking, but I'm literally just going to leave them because this looks more promising. We're on, we're on, we're on, we're on! Turn around, bro, I'm on double turn around. Press hard, turn around, I'm on double. Just had a double. I lost one. Too much going on. They feel pretty small. But you never know. It's actually got some weight there. It might be a little yellow pin actually. Yeah, it's got some weight there. I don't know if it's a stripey anymore. Let's go, we got a good fish on. Can't believe I had a double. Oh, 
Me over and f me. Holy shit. That's better. It's still very green. Good work, Harry. That looks like a pretty good one. massive kegger but I mean a yellow fin's a yellow fin definitely once they start getting this size probably 30 kilos they just get round that is amazing you right hey let's bleed him and get this guy good well the hookup on the squidgy was actually a really good hookup it's pulled all the way through the squidgy both hooks have ripped off the glue so I must have just let it go slack, but that's that's it. We got one. Never know how big the second one was, but <laughs> I think I would have been pretty hurt get, trying to get two in. So. so I got the tuna wrapped in a wet blanket, a couple of ices, and he's in the shade. And then every now and then I'll pour some more water on him as I'm going in. But what's the time? I'll be finished fishing before midday, before lunchtime. Oh. I can't believe that. I'm out about 40 k's from the shore, but I honestly can't believe that. I could keep fishing and keep game fishing. You guys probably want to watch that and watch me catch another one, but I don't need to, you know. That 30 kilos worth of meat is plenty for me, my family, my friends. You know, everyone can have a slab. And tuna's best, like, fresh. You could freeze a lot, and it goes all right in tin tuna and stuff like that when it's frozen, but giving fresh fish to your friends and family is the best, because sashimi... Oh, it's just so good. I'm keen to have some pokey bowls. Anyway, yeah, I guess I'll send it in. Rods are ready to go. What an epic day, and it's only just started. <laughs> I'm stoked. The episode's not over yet, but if you haven't already, leave a like and comment because you guys helped me be able to do this and catch fish like that all by myself. Go and ask for a better run in. How's the glass? Ew. Without giving away my spot, I just rocked up at my cray spot and 
tuna's just there. And I should say, yes, you should be chucking it in an ice bag with heaps of ice. But I wasn't that confident today. Didn't want to go buy ice, so I brought my ice bricks. They actually have salt water in them, so they freeze at a lower temperature. And they're actually colder than normal ice. And the blanket. And that was my plan. To get a fish, come in, go for a quick dive, grab a couple of crays, and usually it only takes me 10 minutes. I'll wet the blanket before I get in. But yeah, I'll suit up, jump in the water, and I'll see you guys in there. Hopefully, I can finish the day with a couple of crays. You. I also just realized I didn't press the top button for my stupid head cam. You don't understand how angry I am right now. But anyway. Couple nice crays to finish off the day. Got a big horse there, the first cray we got today. The second one was with the third one. Oh, splash me. But really big, average size, and then just league with this guy. But good crays. This guy's just an absolute horse, makes other ones look small. He's got to be a kilo. All around me is familiar faces. Got Grace again. She saw I got a new car and a new boat and she came falling back down on her knees when she saw me. But I got a skin in the fish for us. Filleted the tuna up. There's the tuna just there. Didn't get away or anything on it, but I don't really care. It wasn't a world breaker. So, yeah, heaps. Good meat. Cut the bloodline out, take the skin off, and we got sashimi for days. Yeah, it was a good day out there. Well, job is done. Yellowfin tuna solo and first yellowfin on my new boat ticked off. I just finished editing the whole video and I realized I never said goodbye, thank you, whatever. But I think if that doesn't prove I'm a capable fisherman, I don't know what will because that's a marlin solo on my old boat and now a yellowfin tuna solo on my new boat. Probably a bit of luck on my side, especially with those gaff shots, but I got the job done in there and that's all that matters. So yeah, hopefully we can upgrade the yellowfin on my new boat and keep slaying the fish. So yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who supports the channel and everyone who watched this episode. It was one that I'll never forget, I don't think. First yellow thing in my new boat and also a solo one, which I never thought would happen. But yeah, like I said, job is done and I'm stoked. If you want to merch, www.offshoreadventures.com.au. If you want to see all the episodes after I edit them and not have to wait to every Tuesday, then subscribe on Patreon. It does help me a lot. And you guys get to see early episodes of every single episode. So yeah, thank you again, guys. And I'll see you next time. Here. One, 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 solo off a double, you know. Stop it. All of Harry's beaches.